good day everyone my name is nirjhar presently an application engineer at netsim from bangalore india today i will be demonstrating netsim network simulator and various features and functionalities the scientific tool provide for researchers and industries alike to analyze validate networks and also design their own network protocols so in today's webinar i will focus mainly on cognitive radio networks i will start with the purpose of using a network simulator for research then i will give an introduction to netsim followed by basics on cognitive radio networks then i will demonstrate on how to design cognitive radio networks using netsim and also show how to modify cognitive radio protocol source c code in netsim in the end i will explain how to develop custom metrics along with a q and a session for clearing any doubts of the attendees so i would request all of you to note down your questions and during the question and answer session you can inform me the questions why use a network simulator for research with the advancement of technology newer protocols are being drafted very frequently and it is very difficult to keep updated with the latest happenings moreover analyzing network behavior using standard uh, traditional analytical methods has become tough hence network simulators are used to provide an accurate understanding of network behavior and the possible problems and solutions so these are some of the trends observed in the present computer networking domain and the on demand areas of research now include lte wireless sensor network iot and cognitive radio all these technologies are also covered by netsim network simulator in addition almost 50% of all research papers refer a network simulator so now i will start with an introduction to netsim and its features which the user can utilize for the research on the networking protocols netsim is a scientific tool for designing and validating networks and protocols and hence has a lot of relevance in protocol research and development and in defense for instance in network centric warfare the wide range of technologies possible to simulate in netsim are internet works which is local area network wide area network wireless lan mobile ad hoc networks wimax cellular networks which includes gsm and cdma cognitive radio lte and wireless sensor networks and along with it internet of things as well as zigbee in netsim standard version users are provided with c source code of network protocols which are implemented based on ieee and ieta standards the purpose is to allow users to edit the standard protocol code link it with netsim and then analyze the performance of this newly designed protocol so netsim has a huge number of customers varying from industries where it is used for network design and validation to defense labs where it is used for network centric warfare simulation it is also used in r&d labs for protocol development and new technology testing and many phd research papers are also published by utilizing utilizing this tool netsim also has an academic version to be used in network labs of undergraduate curriculum and advanced network labs of graduate courses in electronics computer science 
and others. Providing a holistic view of NetSIM, users will design the network and configure it in a graphical user interface. That is, uh, the network design involves just clicking and dropping of the devices. User need not write any code. This will be simulated by the NetSIM engine and thereby provide multiple metrics regarding the performance and the simulation of the network. One striking feature of NetSIM is this NetSIM engine itself. As you can see, it is utilizing a virtual network stack, which actually mimics or copies the real world TCP IP stack. And hence, makes it very easy for any researcher to edit the protocols and simultaneously get some fairly accurate results. NetSIM is divided into modules or components. The standard version users can make a selective choice while using NetSIM. So this is the list of contents of each of the component and their corresponding IEEE and IETF standards, which were referred during the implementation. For example, the component one consists of protocols implemented in WAN, LAN, and wireless LAN, like Ethernet 802.11, ABGN, and AC. So component two consists of networks based on legacy technologies. Component three is based on BGP network. Component four contains mobile ad hoc networks and WiMAX technologies, while cellular networks, GSM and CDMA, are present in component five. In the same way, component six contains wireless sensor network and personal area network along with IoT. Component seven contains cognitive radio network. Component eight contains LTE. And component nine contains military radio, which is provided only to enterprise customers. In NetSIM V9, we have added new technologies like Internet of Things, rate adaptation in wireless LAN, military radios with high frequency, ultra high frequency and very high frequency bands and revamped old protocols like 802.11 AC that is the gigabit Wi-Fi. Moreover, new features like accelerated and multi-threaded kernel has been done, which has not just increased the simulation speed of NetSIM, but also enhanced the simulation scale. Presently in NetSIM V9, users can also interface MATLAB software with NetSIM, while Wireshark interfacing has been improved to include the latest version of Wireshark. Development has also been done on NetSIM emulator, where users can actually connect NetSIM with real devices running live application. Uh, this NetSIM emulator is a separate add-on. So now I will explain basics on cognitive radio networks. So the IEEE standard which defines cognitive radio is IEEE 802.22 WRAN which stands for Wireless Regional Area Network. In this slide, you can see the graphical representation of static allocation of frequency for various communications like TV broadcasting, maritime mobile, aeronautical mobile, etc. of United States. This allocation was done during 2002. But here you can see in this slide, as per Cisco forecast, overall mobile data traffic is expected to grow tenfold increase by 2019. So we can conclude that very soon all the present allocated channels won't be enough to handle such a huge volume of data. So this demand for extra spectrum 
is technically termed as spectrum crunch. It refers to the lack of sufficient wireless frequency spectrum required for communication among this growing number of consumer devices. On the other hand, on the year 2005, a survey was done at Chicago to gain a better understanding of the actual utilization of this allocated spectrum. As per the report, uh, many of these not so critical channels like TV bands were underutilized. As you can see, only 25% of the total spectrum of the TV band was actually utilized. So we can conclude that while there is heavy spectrum utilization in some bands, the other spectrum bands have low or medium utilization. So the CR technology is a promising technology for this efficient utilization of the available spectrum. So cognitive radio is a wireless communication system which is aware of the environment and its changes and can adapt its transmission parameters accordingly. So this communication system has the cognitive capability that is it can sense the unused spectrum at a specified time and location. Also it has the property of reconfigurability that is it can receive and transmit at different frequency bands by reconfiguring its parameters. As per IEEE 802.22 Cognitive radio should work only between 54 megahertz to 862 megahertz band, that is the TV bands. So this is a graphical representation of the various networking technologies and the range. As you can see, the PAN or personal area network consists of Bluetooth and other technologies. And slowly as we go further away with the increase in distance, we can see the regional area network, which spans from 30 kilometer to 90 kilometer approx. So cognitive radio networks are actually a regional area networks. There are mainly two kinds of users in cognitive radio, the primary users and the secondary users. The primary users have been allocated license to operate in certain spectrum bands. Whereas the secondary users, they have no license, they have no licensed bands assigned to them. They utilize the spectrum channel allocated to the primary users in an opportunistic manner. That is, whenever primary users are not using the channel, secondary users can use them. So this is the opportunistic manner. So this is a generalized cognitive radio cycle and it represents the logical manner in which the secondary users work. So initially spectrum sensing is done where the cognitive radio user or the secondary user, they sense the unused spectrum at any time and location. Then as per spectrum decision, or management that is based on the availability of the spectrum and other policies, the secondary user allocates the best available spectrum band. Allocation of a channel uh, not only depends on spectrum availability, but it also depends on internal and external policies. This internal policy is within the organization and external policies are like the government or the like the government policies. 
but as per spectrum mobility the secondary users shall vacate the spectrum in the presence of any primary user and move to the next best available spectrum and finally spectrum sharing that is the cognitive radio network has to provide a fair and optimal spectrum allocation method among multiple secondary users so this is a part of the basics of cognitive radio so now let me go to netsim and show you how to create a network scenario in cognitive radio